Welcome to the healthcare update. Uh, today, really just one thing to talk about, and that's Impedimed. We had uh, the managing director in the office yesterday doing a presentation and it's been recorded. So Rick Carrion ran through the importance of the new guidelines that have highlighted lymphedema as a uh, complication for breast cancer. But rather than me uh, talk about how exciting Impedimed is, I think it's really important that investors and clients have a look at the video that follows this blog. So we've got a 10 minute presentation. Uh, it's well worth listening to Rick uh, run through the importance, A, of the technology, but B, the significance of the recent inclusion into the guidelines that uh, occurred earlier this week. But uh, take, your take time to have a look at that and we'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye for now. Uh, welcome, uh, Rick and Morton. Uh, it's my pleasure to welcome you to the Morgan's Network this afternoon. We have the uh, Managing Director, Rick Carrion, and uh, the CFO, Morton Vigeland, joining us. Uh, Impedimed made a very important announcement earlier this week where lymphedema was uh, acknowledged as one of the complications for treating breast cancer and that was put into a national set of guidelines. Uh, Rick and the team have been uh, doing a series of presentations uh, around uh, Sydney this week. They presented at New Zealand, uh, at New Zealand conference uh, on the weekend. Uh, Rick, I wonder if I could just turn over to you. We've got the presentation up on the screen, perhaps just a little background on Impedimed, the device, uh, the importance of the new news and what we can look forward to in the near term. Perfect, thanks, Scott. Let me, uh, let me just go over the investment summary. I think it's a good place to start. So I know most of you know the story, so very quickly, we have a device that uses bioimpedance spectroscopy, and what it's used for is fluid status and tissue composition, and really we position the company in, in that way. First indication, lymphedema, as you know, we've been going after that. Lymphedema affects one in three cancer patients. So some significant events obviously have taken place in the last year. We moved from a CPT category one or three code to a one, which is the highest reimbursement you can get in the United States. So we're very excited about that. That went live on January 1st of 2015. As you also know, we announced last November that we were going to go into a targeted launch. We were going to, we were going to look at six different oncology practices over the next 12 months. Well, we've, we now have six practices that we're looking at. I'll give you an update on that. So we're very excited. Uh, the progress that we've made. So I won't go over the financials. I think everybody has seen those in the device. Let me, let me quickly move to the significance of what you have seen here. And it'll be here in just a moment. Then I'm going to go back to that slide here. So the NCCN guidelines came out and were finalized on Friday. We made the announcement, obviously, on Monday. Um, here in Australia, and they went live in the U.S. on Monday. Now, the importance of the NCCN guidelines. So several years ago, we made the decision to really secure the long-term health of this business, and there was two key decisions we made. One was to do a clinical trial. In this background, we, we committed to a $3 million five-year clinical trial when we had about $8 million in the bank. But we knew that when we got to this point in our history that we would need to start getting level one clinical data. And as you know, level one data is the highest level of evidence you can have in the United States. It's a randomized control trial. We have 1,100 patients in that trial. The second leg of that strategy we had was to get included in the NCCN guidelines. So we applied for those guidelines over a year ago into the breast cancer guideline as per directed by the NCCN board. And the interesting thing, this April, they came out with their interim guidelines, and those guidelines talk about the fact, for the very first time, including lymphedema. So educate, monitor, and refer for lymphedema management. Now, that is significant, because up to this point, and before our application, they had never included lymphedema in their guidelines whatsoever. They also took the unprecedented step of including or recommending lymphedema be included in their survivorship program, and they actually clarified what you should do. You should, you should undergo a baseline and periodic evaluation for the development or exacerbation of lymphedema. So right now, the guidelines for breast cancer are finalized. Very important because you now have to monitor and educate every single patient who undergoes cancer treatment finalize those, and then interim, and we're expecting these to be finalized before the end of the calendar year in the survivorship guidelines. So why is that important? We met with the lymphedema 
medical board after our application was accepted <clears throat> and after they gave the um, interim guidelines and our medical director talked with their medical director and they said that because of the information we provided, they recognized that lymphedema was a significant long-term chronic illness after cancer treatment. And the evidence was so compelling that they included lymphedema for the first time. They also encouraged us to, to continue to apply until we had enough clinical evidence to get bioimpedance spectroscopy included by name. Now, if you're in the NCCN guidelines by name, you virtually become standard of care. Now, what's more important is that the private payers have agreed to pay if you get in the NCCN guidelines by name. So very exciting for us at this point to take that first step into the guidelines. So what, what can you expect in the future? So when we included the guidelines last year, or when we, when we did the guidelines last year, we did not have the latest data that I'm showing you now on slide 18. This data is two months old. The, um, the University of Pittsburgh Medical Center just published the results of a 180 patient trial where they use bioimpedance spectroscopy to track their breast cancer patients. And they showed a reduction from 36.4% of breast cancer patients developing lymphedema to 4.4% or an 89% reduction. This is the next data set that we will include with the next application to the NCCN guideline. The NCCN guidelines allow you to apply for inclusion on an annual basis. So it's exciting to us. They took that unprecedented step to put it in the survivorship guidelines. If that becomes the new norm, if they take that on and, and, and um, finalize those details, we will no longer have to apply by tumor type. We'll only have to apply for the survivorship, and this data was never uh, in the last application. So we're very excited about this data. We're expecting that second trial that we list up here to come to fruition and publish before the end of the year. So we'll have two new data points to submit, and we'll have the opportunity uh, to present our case, and at that point, uh, they'll have to make the decision whether they include BIS in that decision. Now, the clinical study that we're currently doing with these key sites, MD Anderson, Mayo, Massey, Macquarie, University of Kansas Medical Center, are all doing the current study. It's 1,100 patients study. We've got more than 200 patients enrolled. That first data set, that interim data set of about four to 500 patients will come out at the end of 2016, early 2017, which means we can now take a landmark study, interim results, and apply to the NCCN guidelines for BIS inclusion again. The following year, we'll have seven to 800 patients enrolled in that study with more than a year's follow-up, and we'll be able to apply again. And the following year, we'll have all 1,100. So we're very excited about the fact that a level one study is coming out with 1,100 patients over the next three years with interim results, and we believe that we'll have enough data to be included in the NCCN guidelines by name. So the significance of Monday announcements was the first step in our journey to get BIS included in those guidelines. So very exciting time for us, and also obviously with the clinical trial that we started several years ago, it's on track to deliver the results when we've promised those results. So. Uh, that's the update as of this point. So let me get into now where we're at with the pilots. We committed last November to do six oncology pilots. We only did four oncology pilots. The learning from those oncology pilots was, was um, instrumental in our decision to move on to multidisciplinary centers. So a couple things went on simultaneously. During the oncology pilots, the information came out on the interim guidelines for the NCCN. At that point, we made the conscious decision to move beyond oncology into the multidisciplinary centers. If you look across the United States, we've identified 500 key multidisciplinary centers that we will be targeting over the next several years, and all of them either follow the NCCN guidelines or the NAPBC guidelines. So both guidelines we are currently in, uh, one specifically for lymphedema, and the other one, lymphedema with the use of bioimpedance spectroscopy. So very exciting time for us. So we made the conscious decision to move beyond oncology to the multidisciplinary centers. We're currently mapping out the final steps of our blueprint for the future. What we've learned from these pilots is the fact that you need to have, include, you need to be included in their electronic medical records, and you need to be able to map out the patient flow so you know the number of devices to put, 
and you now have them following a standardized protocol that is uh, electronically driven and not human driven so that you pick up as many patients and you pick up lymphedema at the earliest possible stages. So we're very excited about that. And we believe that getting included in the and the NCCN guidelines will, will bring on the private payers, and we've also committed that by 2017. We should see that. But should we, should we get included in those guidelines earlier, then reimbursement from the private payers will follow shortly thereafter. So, again, some exciting developments. The targeted launch, we're meeting all of our, our goals that we set out for that. And we expect to go into a full national rollout here by the end of the calendar year.